Yep. Um, really want to say, Sandy and I, how much we appreciate everybody showing up tonight, um, coming together to, uh, you know, just recognize and appreciate all the fine work that this league did to get voters registered and improve the turnout. So we had a campaign that started, as you may recall, back in April and is still ongoing because we're right now working on collecting 20,000 post election signs to go into um, fuel that can be converted into plastic that can be converted into fuel for electricity. So we'll be hearing more about that at the end. Um, we've, I've designed the time together for us tonight so that um, after I make a few opening comments here, then we're gonna hear from some of the folks who have been responsible for either designing or helping to manage some of the different events that we have. You know, we had over 50 different kinds of activities that I was able to actually log in. And, and uh, we had many, many instances of those activities. For example, just think for a minute that we're thinking about collecting 20,000 election signs and we put up 1,500 Spanish signs about the charter amendments and the list goes on and on. So when I just started calculating, we did more than 30,000 texts, text messages. When I started calculating how many it is, it's thousands and thousands and thousands, probably close to 60,000 different instances of things that this league has done around this election. And I'm very proud to say that I believe it's probably the largest voter registration and turnout we've ever done in our 81 year history. So we're here to thank you. We're here to recognize your work and to celebrate that and hear stories about it, hear anecdotes, talk about things that went well or maybe didn't go as well. Um, we're gonna delay actually doing any kind of evaluation on our work uh, until later. This is just an evening for us to celebrate and hear what we've done. You know, I set a goal when we started the get out the vote campaign at the end of our initial election task force work that we would increase voter turnout in Orange County by 25%. We certainly didn't do that. Um, it would have been very difficult to do that anyway. Carol Fogelson reminded me of that, but we did increase it by 5%. So Orange County election results um, turn out, the unofficial results, excuse me, were 75.35%. I expect that will go up. But in 2016, for this presidential election, the general election, it was 71.74. So we did increase turnout. We didn't increase it as much as um, we might have thought we could, but we did a great job nonetheless. Um, so this is our time to celebrate, and we're going to get started with uh, the folks who are here to talk about the things that they did. And please be mindful of the fact that there's no way for us to talk about all 51 of the events that we've identified, but clearly we trying to collect a sampling of them and give people an opportunity to share some information. So we're trying to limit their time to three minutes. And I'm gonna turn it over initially to Leah Nash, who is our voter services chair, as you all know, who's had her imprint and her fingers on almost every single one of these 51 events and activities. So Leah, you're on. Unmute yourself. There you go. Hey, everybody. I just wanted um, just kind of to support what Sandy and Gloria are saying. Thank you very much. This was an incredible, comprehensive um, initiative and effort. I got muted. OBR, BBM, and GOTV are like ingrained in our brains now. Um, and uh, we have, so in 2016, Gloria had some percentages about cast for 565,843 and in 2020, it looks like 866,000. So I think that you all made an incredible impact on what we were doing here in Orange County. Um, we had over 50 members on the task force alone and then our 100 plus voter services members uh, initiated and came together. Beyond what you're gonna hear tonight with the 18 things that Gloria has put together, um, we had candidate forums with, com with the Commission on Local Debates. We started a partnership with them. There was a candidate forum with a partnership with ACLU. Um, you'll probably hear Kim talk about our partnership with UCF, SGA, and Florida PERG, which is a public interest research group for students. Um, I just wanted to say thank you again for your comprehensive work. I don't have a funny anecdote for you, but I did 
specifically want to say thank you to Gloria and Sandy for your leadership in um, this giant initiative and effort. So I just wanted to kind of applaud all of you and all of this during a pandemic. So what else can I say? I'm so excited to hear the other things on the list and um, your initiatives as well. And I'm just and totally grateful to all of you. Thank you so much. That's okay, it. so we're gonna go on next to Susan Baxter. And you know, our communications committee is roaring forward, brand new um, re revised and refreshed committee. And Susan has been leading that effort and that's, that's a fabulous group. But before we do that, I wanted to mention that the conclusion of these introductory kickoff kinds of um, presentations, We'd like to have some time at the end when those of you who would like to share a story or an anecdote or a reaction or feelings that you've had about this election, we'd love to hear it. So Susan, you're up next. Good evening. And it has been an amazing wild ride since the end of June when I became communications chair and joined this massive effort of propelling people towards getting out the vote and such, and working s closely with Leah, who, who has been a tireless warrior in this to get billboards in the Pine Hills area and Cimarron in 50, where we have a huge Hispanic population, to getting tons of broadcast and print media with Orlando Sentinel, Pulp Town, other newsletters, channels 13, 2, 6, 9, and 35, WUCF interviews, uh, that were done both for radio and for television, always having to reach out to Gloria and Sandy going, I've got somebody asking about this, who can we go to? Is that us? Is that state? Who can we tap to have this interview happen? Uh, they were great. They were always available to direct me and who the best person was. And usually it was Gloria. The woman was always interviewing somewhere. So that's fabulous. We have a wonderful tight-knit group on the communications committee. A lot of them are history committee folks. And then we have some brand new people who have joined the committee as well, who have tirelessly worked to post the 100 days campaign. And I hope everybody saw that. That has been one of the most fabulous social media campaigns I have ever seen in any type of, of social media. We had John Klapchuk posting daily on Instagram. He's brand new to the league. I think he joined in July. We had Lynn posting it on uh, Facebook. Lisa's pulling some of them and putting them in the newsletter. Then we had a partnership with Launch That that Leah Nash pulled together for us and they worked with us for free to do social media for the Get Out the Vote campaign, uh, which uh, posted tons of information on Instagram as well as Facebook. We did posts in English and in Spanish. Uh, what else do I need to say? I think that's it. It was a massive endeavor. We've done a lot of work. Um, Facebook numbers, just to very quickly tell you, we have 3,701 likes, 81% of our fans are women, 18% are men. The bulk of our fans are at least 35. We have opportunities to grow in the 18 to 24 age group. That's only 3% currently. 25 to 34 group is 15%. Most of our fans are from Orlando. Winter Park is second. Uh, when you look at who engaged with our Facebook page, 85% are women, 13% are men. The largest group is 65 or older, which is 40%. The 55 to 64 is 20%. And again, Orlando leads the way versus Winter Park. Um, and Lynn, thank you for those stats. Um, it has been an incredibly interesting ride for my first foray into active work with the league. And thank you for this opportunity. And it's been a pleasure working with everybody. Terrific, terrific. Thank you, Susan. And we're gonna go on now to Mary Lou Basham. I'm gonna talk about her efforts with grassroots and religious organizations. And this was something that started very early in our campaign, all the way back to April, we got that underway. So Mary Lou, tell us about it maybe some things that happened. Yeah, so uh, Lou were born in April. We ended up getting uh, nine people on our group, um, some new members, some longtime members, which worked out well. We, I would call us very diverse, very energetic. What we had in common was uh, the de desire for action uh, in the time of COVID. Um, mostly I'd say what we had in common is we all like to talk a lot and we like to connect with people. So 
from April to July, we, uh, we were adjusting to COVID. And during that time, we built out a plan that was uh, based on the dates of the election cycle. We created shared emails. We created a shared contact list. Uh, we created common communication templates. And eventually, once there was the FAQ messaging and we started to get messaging from um, the league, we started pushing that out digitally. So April to July, we were very digital. Uh, then things started to shift. We were obviously flexible and we expanded from vote by mail to census 2020 because that was way past April 1st, as you all know. Uh, voter registration and of course the amendments, uh, pushing the communication fronting some stuff for the um, Speakers Bureau. So we have a zillion stories to tell. You saw Jim in the newsletter, but uh, I'll just tell you one tonight and it's pretty much about connection. Um, Lee Rambo, who I didn't see her on the call, uh, had a connection in Winter Park who gave her a connection to the Win Winter Park Housing Authority. And it turns out they have six properties in Winter Park serving 1,200 people of low income. So Lee and Denise Burton connected them to the Speakers Bureau, ended up doing um, five presentations uh, through Zoom, but Facebook Live did also, because they were prepared they could do that and recorded that. So we reached a lot of people over time. I don't have the stats on how many ended up watching it. But what I wanted to share was a thank you uh, note we got from one of the, um, the coordinators there that sent us an email, sent it to Lee and D Denise. Um, thank you once again for yet an amazing voters information center session. It has truly been both an honor and pleasure to gain a wealth of knowledge, resources and voter education, not only for the residents, but for the staff within the Winter Park Housing Authority. May we continue to stay in touch and find effective ways to reach out to our res residents in preparations for upcoming elections. This is definitely not the end of our efforts. So what, what it was is finding trusted people and training those too, because the people running the place needed this education too. So anyway, real quick, that connection led to us going, oh, there's, there's other housing authorities. And we connected with the Orlando Neighborhood Improvement Corporation, which by September, they invited us to uh, 10 of their events, which were focused if they're 10, they have 10 properties in Orange County, big um, apartment complexes. Um, where they were having food and clothing distribution so we knew people would show up. So we got on board with that and engaged the census people also because the census was still going on in September. And they, um, they had a table, we had a table, we staffed two people from our committee and census had a whole bunch of people and giveaways and kind of created a full-fledged civics event for these 10 oh properties God. in um, very underserved areas. So what we did is we went out with uh, armed with our masks and a unique flyer that we did unique for each property um, because they're in different physical places and languages and um, staff the table. And what we did was answer questions and met people where they are. Cause we had, you know, you, we think about what everybody knows. And there are a lot of people who don't even know what vote by mail is, let alone early voting. Um, so uh, what I would say we learned is a hyper-local approach um, really, really matters to make a difference. Great. Gosh, Mary Lou, I just learned some things that I didn't even know about your campaign. So thank you. That's the whole point of this tonight. So thank you. We're going to go on to Sue Gilman to talk to us about hot topics and in particular our judicial candidate forum. Sue, are you there? You need you to unmute yourself. No, nope. mm, there Sue's we go. Not there. I'm mute. Yes, there I'm here. Is. I'm here. There she Sorry. Is. I am actually in the process of moving from my phone to my computer, which is gonna be better. Um, but anyway, we held a Hot Topics, a judicial panel, um, and these were all the local judges. Um, it, we had eight judges participate. It was super informative. Um, Barbara and I had um, thank yous from a lot of Wait, now I have to turn this off. From a lot of people who, oh dear, this is not good. So we lost your video. Stand by, please. Uh, shoot. Camera might be covered up. She's, she's, uh, she's got her phone and her, her camera, so give her yeah, a second. I'm, for... I'm working on it. At least she's not like the guy on CNN today who um, had a moment when he got disconnected and said some 
very interesting words out loud. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, just go on Twitter. I think I'm only in one place now, which is on the computer. <laughs> there you go. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, we had eight judges. Our panel was um, informative. They were lively. There was um, great information and um, differentiation between the judges that, as everyone knows, people have a hard time um, kind of, uh, you know, researching the vote for judges. Um, I think our special shout out has to go to Judge Bob LeBlanc, who not only helped us um, contact the panel and make the hot topics happen, but also did a fabulous job as the moderator and really had brought great questions and did a great job bringing the individuals out. So um, it was, it was a, a Although it was less well attended than we would have hoped, I think those who did attend got a lot out of it, for sure. But yes, indeed. I, I figured out who I was going to vote for at that session. So yeah, right. and, and a big shout out, Sue, for you and Barbara for Hot Topics coming up tomorrow. If you're not registered, please get registered. Tomorrow is going to be a super um, important and super interesting Hot Topics. The subject is uh, the decline of local media and its impact on democracy. And we have a fabulous panel and a lot of um, really good juicy questions that are going to be, they're going to be faced with. We have um, a representative, representatives from both the newspaper media and Channel 13, which is our, you know, kind of local, um, local, hyper local uh, TV. So it should be very informative. I hope everyone can make it and please register on the site. We were charging $10 for Hot Topics earlier in the year, but there is no charge um, effective with this um, Zoom Hot Topics tomorrow. And it's also Great. streaming on Facebook. We hope. We hope. <laughs> yeah, streaming on Facebook. So Barbara, you're up next. Um, Tell yeah. us about um, the Orange County Charter Amendments Hot Topics. Um, the uh, Charter Amendments Hot Topics was a great opportunity to fulfill two goals that are sort of our animating principles when we uh, mount a Hot Topics program. Uh, number one, we were able to spotlight and promote the work of not one, but two of our issue advocacy committees and we were able to really do a valuable service in helping educate league members in depth on the issues involved with those amendments. Um, we were lucky we had two members in the league who participated in the uh, Charter Review Committee, Angela Melvin and Eugene Staccardo. So we were able to get a little bit of a look behind the scenes as to how they went about their work. And it also, as I said, gave us a great venue to highlight the work of the natural resources and government committees. Um, our great natural resources chair, Kay Hudson, with a very important assist from Rachel Deming, their legal advisor, were able to go really deep on amendments one and two. So we were able to really understand everything involved and what's at stake. Um, and life happens, but uh, Carol Fogelsong was not able to be there for her committee, but Angela Melvin uh, and the other panelists stepped up and did a great job of covering amendment three. Um, we are truly blessed to have some amazing workers that are toiling in the fields. Um, and it was nice to see them get to shine and um, show off their work. And also, we got the W in the election. Yeah. So the, all three of those amendments passed and are now part of the charter, or will be. And we are very proud of our work there. So thank you, Barbara. Um, Joan, Irwin, you know, this year was not only this amazing election and the pandemic and civil unrest and George Floyd and all the things that have been happening, but our suffrage centennial, so big important events we had this year. Talk to us about that, Joan. Actually, I think I skipped somebody. I'll get back to them in a minute. So Joan, go ahead. Okay. Um, we, we used our celebrations of the um, 
of the passage of the 19th Amendment. This was the 100th anniversary, of course. And the History Committee was called on to do many presentations. And we used each of those presentations to emphasize the importance of voting and what a tough battle it was to get the, to get the um, amendment passed 100 years ago and how so many people of color were left out of the history books when it came to uh, reporting on how that um, achievement finally happened and how it's happened, you know, it took decades more for a lot of people. So we started in January, uh, kicking off the UCF Life Program with an audience of almost 500 people with our uh, Centennial Chairperson, um, Linda Chapin, gave a talk about the history of the battle for the 19th Amendment. And uh, Marty Haney uh, did the other part of that program to talk about um, women's uh, history, the history of the League since 1920. That was a fun thing. Our next program was a um, big program was in February when we teamed up thanks to AAUW, ask us to be their partner to celebrate the centennial. And we did that with a program called The Heart of the Matter is Voting, the day before, the day after Valentine's Day. So we celebrated the National League's birthday and, um, and our own anniversary and the 19th Amendment. Our other most fun things were then in August, the focus of the um, centennial celebration. And we had three good big deals that, that month. Uh, the first was on the eve of the Florida primary. We had a suffragist parade downtown with about 25 uh, suffragists in a parade, waving signs saying, vote, vote, vote. Um, and Harry T. Byrne and Susan B. Anthony and Sojourner Truth, um, um, reenactors, telling about the uh, the importance of voting. That was uh, that was on the eve of the actual primary, so we got some good TV and press coverage from that. Um, our next fun thing was on the very day of the um, suffrage of the 19th Amendment anniversary, we had a gala party uh, with our own league members, about almost 100 people attended, and that was with comic relief and great um, liveliness from good old Jill Sharga. We had, and it wrapped up with uh, a rousing um, um, invocation from good old Gloria about how hard, hard, hard we must fight, fight, fight to get out the vote, vote, vote. <laughs> in and sure enough, we did that. So, um, our, and then on that, that, and that week too, our most colorful thing was um, Linda Chapin arranged for the city of Orlando to write up, light up the Lake Eola Fountain in purple and gold in honor of the suffragists. Uh, the Lake Eola Fountain was there. The um, Dr. Phillips Performing Arts Center was purple and gold and the asparagus in front of the city hall. So those were the colorful things we did at that. And um, we are glad we were able to use that important occasion, that important anniversary, and this landmark as part of the landmark election that we had in November. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Joan. You know, we started this back in April, just as we were realizing that the whole country was going to be shutting down and knowing that the pandemic was going to push us to vote by mail. And so right. one of the very first things we did was get signs together to put in, in our neighborhood. So um, Claudia Nunn, would you tell us about that campaign? So she, this is Mary Lou, she's, she had a oh, work thing. Okay. So she, um, she asked me to, me and Joan. Okay, Mary Lou, you're on, go for it. I'm in. So I have, yeah, she sent me an email. 
So Joan, correct me if I'm wrong, but she said we distributed 100 signs via seven mm -hmm. distribution points. Mm -hmm. And we focused on high traffic areas to put some of these signs uh, in College Park, for example, on the main drag up there by Dubstead, Winter Park, Belle Isle, South Orlando, Lake Underhill area, Lockhart, and downtown. Um, the learnings were that um, the sign was too small and we made that choice to save money. We thought that was smart, but we learned that lesson. Don't do that again. And yard signs are pricier than people think, especially if you expect them to be two-sided. So that was, Joan, do you want to add anything else to that? Yeah, one color is also a way to save money. Yeah. But we think yard signs are a good way to make a point. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Mary Lou. Um, Lisa, you know, another big part of our communication strategy is our fabulous weekly newsletter and our website. Can you share with us, Lisa Atkins? Well, um, I don't know how, if I, if there hadn't been a pandemic, I would not have been able to go anywhere anyway, because the communications having to take place through our weekly newsletter, as all of you saw, it got longer and longer and longer because we had so much information. Now, fortunately, uh, we kept, I think we kept email fatigue down because we got most of the information in the newsletter, but literally with the centennial, Black Lives Matter, uh, vote by mail, the election, get out the vote. It, um, it, <laughs> it grew and grew and grew. So, uh, you know, we'll probably keep it at every week, but um, it hopefully won't be quite as long. Um, the website, I think, worked really well. And we, we uh, scored a lot of visitors. Um, Statistic-wise, just in October, we had 185,000 views coming up through organic searches for our website. We had users on our website, 13,000 new users, and um, that was incredible. So um, Voter Services, they put together the information uh, that we built out on the voting info section of the website and those pages were you know being used and they were being linked to by outside sources so uh other people other you know news organizations or um groups advocacy groups were linking to our site that's why we were getting a lot of it especially in october um 60 of our viewers were male <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was interesting how men were coming to our site and using it a lot. Um, we um, also were able to, um, the website is, is really, it's a member management system with a website on the side. So when it came to the volunteering module, um, I think it was Kathy, Sh Kathy Sheeran that... Sheeran. Yes, that has helped set up a lot of those volunteering uh, opportunities that our members can go on and um, click on that. And our donor section, our donor module also got fired up and we had so many people uh, be generous and go through the website and donate uh, to the league. And um, our advocacy groups, they... Um, mostly communicated by sending me things to put in the newsletter. And also I worked hard uh, this year to try to make sure our newsletter was a little more colorful and diverse and showcased um, members that, you know, a lot of people think of the league as old white haired ladies. <laughs> and <laughs> I am, <laughs> look at me, but we have so many new members that are younger that are diverse and that's the that's the direction of the league from literally from the top down our national president so that's what we're trying to reflect as we remake the website and the newsletter in the new year terrific we are so appreciative of all you do lisa thank you so You're we're going to hear next from rachel allen with the Peace and Justice Institute of Valencia, and also certainly a very proud member of Leland Voters Orange County and the work we did together um, with them for the Votes for All campaign. And she's sharing her screen with us now. 
Um, thank you, Gloria, and thank you, Sandy, for having me here tonight. And thank you to the League for um, the amazing partnership with this program, which is called uh, Hashtag Votes for All, the power to create a more perfect democracy. So this work began uh, over a year ago when we came together brainstorming um, a year ago in the fall and just bringing together so many diverse voices from the community. I mean, I think these planning meetings and these educational forums where we built this program were some of the most valuable pieces of this work. Look at all the partners that came to the table. Um, we uh, hosted three events face-to-face -face before we um, were in the pandemic and um, they happened in February. Well, there was one in January, February. And then of course we moved the program online. So there were seven programs in total and um, feedback from the participants. And I think overall we had about 200 people attend these events. They said it was enlightening, informative, powerful and, and people said it was even personally transformative. So we are so grateful because um, we had just so much wisdom in the room to build this program. And so the league participated in many ways, one of which was during each one of these seven forums, educating about voting as we moved um, toward um, the, um, the primary and then toward uh, the general election. But I wanna mention the, uh, the members who participated, Fairland Livingston, who's a new member, Gloria Picard, Joy Dickinson, Ann Patton, Joan Irwin, Kim Cohen with helping the voter registration when we had our face-to-face -face sites. Thank you, Kim. Sue Foreman, who helped us get to the, um, the Women's Center in Winter Park, Lisa Adkins with all the newsletter publications, and Sandy Vidal, who helped us get um, you know, snacks. Uh, we had research from this group. We did voter registration from this group. Um, we talked about voting in support with support of this group. Um, there was a press release written by Joy and of course all the marketing. So we're just so very, very grateful for the partnership. So the lecture was fascinating, this idea of the promise of America, but then just looking how we started with a rebellion because of course the promise of America excluded the majority of people living uh, on the land. We talked about the suffragists, but then, and just the first nonviolent really big march that happened, we didn't know. I didn't know that women had the very <laughs> first march on Washington. Who knew, right? <laughs> um, but again, we were looking at this challenge of telling Black women, pushing Black women to the back and saying, your time is not now. So looking at the racism within the movement, and yet we persisted. There is Mary McLeod Bethune in the front row and the National Association of Colored Women. So we looked at this history, and then we looked at the, the clash with the Klan and other groups that were pushing back against women's power emerging. Of course, then the intersection with the Ocoee massacre, Rosewood, uh, but again, uh, and we persisted, Mary Paclaw Bethune. So the events were engaging. Um, when we went online, um, it was very powerful. And um, of course, culminating in, in this last week's uh, memorial of Akoi. And, um, and I just want to say the true worth of a race must be measured by the character of its womanhood. And I cannot imagine an organization with more powerful men and women um, leading in our region and in our country. So thank you, everybody. Thanks for this, Gloria. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. We were so proud to be a part of that. Um, next, we're going to hear from Kay Hudson, who really could have talked about it, a number of things, but mm -hmm. she's going to focus primarily on the charter amendments and the um, signage that we, they did and the caravans that they did to help get those passed. So, Kay, you're on. You're on mute. Kay, okay, you may need to unmute. You don't talk, we don't see you, I don't think. There, are you coming? I know Kay's here. Yes, yeah, she's here, she's just okay. there. she I'm is. Here. I'm here. Well, I just wanted to know that I'm just welling up with with pride and and emotion at the the fine work that this organization does. It's it, I'm so proud to be a member of this league. It's so wonderful. So I so when I think personally, when I think get out the vote, I think about going out to apartment complexes and running up and down the stairs and knocking on doors and leaving brochures and talking to people and get registering voters. And this is what I think of when I think of get out the vote. And we couldn't do any of that this year. And it was, I, I felt so stymied. And then it just so happened that two of the issues that the natural resources has as, um, 
um, position statements were being addressed by the Orange County Charter Amendments. It gave us a perfect, perfect opportunity to introduce the Charter Amendments, our priorities, and get out the vote in a time when we couldn't get out the vote in any traditional way. We could do it outside at a distance in a healthy way and give it full energy. And um, it was the most fun thing I've ever done to get out the vote. We had streamers and decorated cars and bubbles and, and vote early signs and vote CCC on all three signs. And we had uh, just so many people coming out and going from location to location and um, tooting our horns and making a ruckus. And I, I just can't thank you enough, Lisa, for voicing it for us and, and helping us spread the word that we were going to be out there doing that. And um, it, was, it was just uh, so much fun. And the best part is, is that we won. No, we didn't win just a little bit. We won by landslide numbers. We got that right to clean water with 89% of the vote. That's just unheard of. And then the, and we, you know, we've worked in such a long time on, on split oak and protecting split oak. And then to get that for with 87%, I think it was for the public saying that they agree with our positions. It's very, very fulfilling. And um, that was my, mm, I guess that's about all I have to say about it is that it was just the, very much fun. And I thank everybody that participated. And I thank everybody who helped me get word out. Both, yes, both absolutely. Especially. Congratulations. Tremendous effort. And it was very, very successful. And I really think that your Natural Resources Committee made that happen. So thank you. We had, you know, many things besides the caravan articles in the paper. And we've done, we wrote letters to everybody, haven't we, Kay? And it's yes, been we paying have. off. So. <laughs> Yeah, and we, we I can, have learned I have learned so much this past year. <laughs> it's been an, yeah. an incredible growing experience for me. So another Thank new you. thing that we've never tried before as a league, we've we've done it. Um, different members have done it with the um, um, the uh, census, but we've not ever done a campaign specifically ourselves. But Betty Sapa, all by herself, put together and and uh, we've have, we've done texting. And Betty, tell us about that. Okay, um, can I talk about the high school outreach as well? Sure, absolutely, absolutely. Go ahead. I'll start there because voter services has, we've been doing ongoing voter registration and voter We're having a hard time hearing you. Can you speak up a little bit louder? Sure, we've been doing ongoing voter registration and education for, in high schools for the three years prior to this. Um, and we have a small army of volunteers who love going into the high schools and speaking to the students and talking to them about the importance of voting and then registering them. Obviously, we couldn't continue to do that when the pandemic hit, so we had to figure something else out. And the National League had set out a PowerPoint um, that was just the basis of what local leagues could use uh, for education for students. And uh, so we adapted it, we added on to it, uh, put in a lot of information that we knew from experience the kids needed um, and adapted it to, to uh, election law of Florida and specifically to Orange County. Um, we had editors, uh, Mary Montanas and Nancy Nix, Terry Osborne, Denise uh, Burton and Gloria all helped edit it. We wrote a script. Um, and then Kim Cohen narrated it so that we have a PowerPoint now that is auto advance and has narration. It can be used by students on their own if, there were, if they are um, learning remotely, it can be used by teachers. It can be used by teachers teaching remotely and in their classroom. So the exciting thing is it is now embedded in the OCPS social studies curriculum. Um, it, the, uh, the social studies program specialist was great about uh, helping us do that. And in addition, we contacted every school in Orange County, the contacts we already had, plus uh, principals at the schools we had not been to. And I did get some feedback 
Um, here's one uh, that one teacher at Wakaiva said, I thought it was very helpful. The students and I thought it was very helpful. They seem particularly excited to register this, register this time around due to being a presidential election year. And the PowerPoint had direct links to um, Registered Vote Florida, also for um, Vote 411 and so on. So even students who were at home just doing it on their own could click and register. Another teacher at Okoe, I was able to show this presentation to economic students yesterday. A lot of them are 18 or close to 18. I think it was very well done. Uh, I tried to keep the students that are learning from home involved as well and made sure to mention several times the deadline to register. So we got great feedback from um, the teachers and I feel like that was, that was a big success and hopefully it'll continue to be used. We can adapt it as, as time goes on. Now on to texting. When um, it showed up in the newsletter that the state was encouraging people to text for the census, we started thinking, well, why can't we do our own campaign? So um, we did. And over two uh, different days, we had 33 volunteers text over 30,000 um, 18 to 30 year olds, uh, uh, people of color in Orange County who were registered to vote. So it was a very specific list. And um, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was easy to do just as it had been for the census. Um, and it, we had some funny things like a couple of men saying, well, I'm not a woman because we said, hello, I'm so-and-so from the League of Women Voters. And you, you know, they were a little confused, but we figured that out. And then, um, Mary Montanas texted me, I had several who voted, congrats. Also one who wasn't sure they were registered. So I sent an SOE link and voting info. That was fun. So it, it feels good to be able to help people when you are you know one-on-one -on -one texting them and giving them information. We also included links to um, Vote 411, said you can get information about candidates and issues here. Um, so we also made some great contacts uh, with the uh, League of Women Voters of St. Pete area who had been done texting campaigns and they have for something for the future, they have a behavior change marketing campaign to increase voter turnout. And we have the document 22 pages long or something, right Gloria? About, right. about <laughs> what they, this comprehensive plan they to do outreach in their community and increase voter participation. Really impressive. And Gloria also talked to Palm Beach County about texting. So now that we've done it once, we know we can do it again, maybe a little differently, but um, we, we've had, got that under our belt. But yes, um, and thank you, Betty, for your, your identification of the target group. I think it was spot on. So thank you so much for that. Thanks. Um, let's move on to Lynn Osgood. Um, to talk to us about the 100 Days to the Vote campaign. And Lynn, thank you for everything you do on Facebook, but tell us about this particular initiative. You're welcome. Uh, first of all, I'm pinch hitting for Joy Dickinson. She couldn't be here this evening, but she left me great notes about everything to say. Um, on July 27th, uh, we kicked off our 100 Days social media project for Instagram and Facebook. As probably most of you know, we featured daily salutes to US women's historic achievements mixed with tidbits about voting that was tailored for safety during the pandemic. The team especially wanted to send thanks to everyone who participated by liking and sharing the tributes to women heroes. We literally reached thousands through our social media platforms. We had a lot of likes and a lot of shares. Um, Joy was the project editor and she wanted to send special thanks to some people, um, especially Ann Patton and Tana Porter who were researchers and writers, Tamara Rivera for her invaluable help with translations, Lisa Adkins for placing the posts in the newsletter, and John Klapchek, and, um, and remember these are Joy's notes, because she said me, <laughs> for uh, <laughs> posting on um, Instagram and Facebook. And if I can just um, echo that also, I want to thank, from our perspective, Joy and everybody on the History Committee and everybody who took care of those posts, because it was a real pleasure to work on this project, it really was. Um, some examples of our favorite posts included a um, celebration of LWVOC member Jean Grierson's 100th birthday, a tribute to our late president, Carol Davis, and then posts featuring league related history, uh, such as feminist icon Gloria Steinem's heritage as the granddaughter of Pauline Steinem, who was president of the Ohio Women's Suffrage Association. And then in Orange County, 
the persistent efforts of LWVOC member Lila Hankins, who is African-American, and Jewish activist Flossie Gluckman uh, to have lunch together in Orlando restaurants to chip away at the laws of segregation. Uh, going forward, the History Committee and Centennial Chair Linda Chapin are looking for a way to collect and retain these vignettes for posterity. So if anybody has any ideas, um, they're warmly welcomed. Um, Lastly, Joy just wanted to just mention that as we wrapped up the campaign, which it's hard to believe was on election day just a, a few days ago, she wanted to say that we're more committed than ever to our mission of empowering voters and defending democracy. Excellent, excellent. Absolutely fabulous campaign. I bet there's not another one like it in the country. No, um, Kim, uh, tell us about voter registration. We started out back in April focusing primarily on online voter registration and vote by mail. Then we were able to get back on the ground with some face-to-face -face voter registration events. So Kim, you're on. Sure. So um, it was an interesting year from a voter registration perspective. We had a lot of really great plans about doing some hyper-local that kind of fell apart right around March 8th, which was our last face-to-face uh, -face event this year and, and uh, until we picked up again right towards the end it, where we started again on the 24th of September. So out of the 57, 55 events that we had scheduled, we had to cancel 17 of them. And and we still managed to register face-to-face -face 936 voters. So I think getting close to a thousand in this year is a pretty good number, but the by far the bulk of those numbers come from the high schools with, I mean, hundreds at a time, whereas many of our face-to-face -face events were fewer than 10 registered. So to Betty and her team, and I'm, I've been on that team, I know how enthusiastic everybody is and how grateful the kids are. So I thought that was really incredible. Um, what we were able to do, though, online when we transitioned, you know, Leah forged a lot of great partnerships. And the one that um, I got to participate in the most was with UCF and Florida Perg. So we did a couple of on we did an on campus event with UCF where we hosted one of the I think it was the um, first debate watching night and registered a couple of voters there. Then we participated with them virtually in two uh, brunch and ballots events, uh, one where we had someone from the Speakers Bureau on, I think speaking about um, amendments, I think, Leah, correct me if I'm wrong about that. Um, and then we did another one where I spoke uh, uh, just about how to go vote, register to vote and voting by mail and vote early and all that. Um, and it was really wonderful to see the engagement from the youth vote because we all know that that's, you know, that's our largest growing percentage of eligible voters. Um, and then the last thing that we were able to do was with partnership in a partnership with Florida Perg, um, they were doing not only a Florida wide campaign, but also a national campaign. Um, and we co-hosted, we, sorry, we hosted an event on a, the uh, Sunday before, when was it, Lee? I think it was the 5th. Uh, no, not, I'm sorry, not the 5th. It was uh, the, one of the last weekends in November prior to uh, well, there was still early voting going on. So prior to um, the Tuesday, and we spent two hours, had more than 10 volunteers from the league registered, uh, spoke to hundreds of college students, uh, either from UCF or University of Florida. And I personally managed to help students find their, where their vote by mail ballots were so that they could go either pick, have their parents send them or turn them in in person when they went home if they were you know so that was incredibly satisfying and just in general to see the enthusiasm from the young voters was really you know going from high school through to university really really uh touching and i think you know some of the articles that i've read have talked about the youth vote and that it has increased nationwide. So that's really exciting. And just on a personal note, I have to say thank you to Leah for being a tireless champion and never saying no to an opportunity, always being there with a smile and with enthusiasm and with respect for everyone that we're speaking to. So she's a real inspiration to me. And it's been incredible to work with this group this year and to accomplish what we did under such bizarre circumstances. So thanks to everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kim. Um, Sandy Vidal, so one of the things that we had as a horizon goal this year was to really focus heavily on partnerships and how we can network better in the community. Talk about some of the things we got going besides the Peace and Justice Institute. I was going to say, starting with the Peace and Justice Institute, right? Um, this year has been really great when it comes to partnerships, and I am not even going to come close to mentioning all of them, 
but um, just wanted to highlight a few. One is uh, having the opportunity to work with the ACLU. That was the first time I've ever done a Facebook Live um, where I got to be part of the team behind the scenes. And it was really great to be able to have a Facebook Live that was so widely watched by so many, both through the League of Women Voters site and through the ACLU site. So. That was one of our first forays into that. Um, the Global Fe um, Peace Film Festival featured several uh, different uh, movies that were focused on women's issues. And so we promoted that through our website and through uh, our newsletters on a, a regular basis to encourage people to get involved in that. The Orange County Regional History Museum, that relationship has been growing stronger and stronger. I know that we started that um, really focused on that last year, but really working into this year and getting um, the information that we did around the 100 days, having an exhibit over there around women's issues has just been really fantastic when it comes to continuing to build this movement. The Florida Senate District 13 debate and the school board district five were done in collaboration with the commission on local debates. One of the things that we realized this year was that putting on some of these local debates was going to be a little bit more challenging for us. Usually we partner with others. And so this gave us a great opportunity to partner with some league members who actually run this nonprofit and be able to promote the work that they're doing. So uh, that was great. And those are still available online if you want to go back and watch who won and who lost and judge whether they debated better. We also had the Your Vote your Vote, Your Voice, where Gloria had the opportunity to be on a panel with the Delta Sigma Theta sorority. And I think she said that was one of the most challenging panels she was on. They were very well prepared and had lots of great questions. And so we were proud of the work that Gloria was able to do there. Uh, Leah got to be featured on a coffee talk with um, Your Vote, Your Voice. And um, that was with the Wellbeing Network. And Denise was part of the Holocaust Museum and Education Center's uh, panel discussion. And so that was really exciting that we had been called on to speak on behalf of the Holocaust Center as well. And then we had this partnership that Leah briefly mentioned with Launch That, which helped us in creating some t-shirts and social media and other things for the um, for our campaigns in the community. But most of all, I think the, um, the most important partnerships have been amongst all of the league members and the committees and the get out the vote team. I don't think I've ever been part of an organization that had so many dedicated, passionate volunteers. And if you ever wanna be on the side of passion, just uh, really spend a little bit of time with natural resources. Not that all of you aren't passionate, but let me tell you, Kay is, uh, and her team are definitely a fighter for everything. I don't think there was a single voting site that I went by that did not have the signs for um, all of the charter amendments. We went out to Leah and Eugene and I went out to put out the um, vote 411 signs. And so as I was out there, nobody could compete with the um, vote yes signs that were out there. So that's greatly appreciated. I know I'm missing a lot of things, but um, some of them have already been mentioned and um, just really proud of the work that we've done in gaining all of these partnerships. Like Gloria said, this was one of our goals as part of our strategy map. And as we go back to look at this in December and start to plan in January at our planning meeting and then February with our strategy mapping, I think that we'll see that we've really surpassed a lot of the goals that we had and it's all because of all of you. So thank you. Thank you, Sandy. So a big part of our efforts have been for a long time Speakers Bureau, but man, it took on yeah. a whole new meaning that's um, this, true. So Denise Burton, tell us about some of the things you've been involved in there. Uh, yes, thank you, Gloria. Um, I was involved in uh, modifying uh, uh, Betty. Uh, we did an OCPS 
uh, that was on the website that was uh, Betty spoke about earlier. And so I did a slight modification to that great PowerPoint. So we had it more for the general public. Um, I also put together our tried and true, your voice, your power, your vote, the beginning history portion of that section. And then we adapted it to uh, what's currently going on with the mail-in voting. And we had some uh, great people that we presented in front of. Um, we already mentioned the Holocaust Center. Uh, they were doing a strategies for action uh, during the George Floyd uh, tragedy that we had. They, the Holocaust Center put together a whole bunch of uh, lunch and learns and I was really grateful to be part of that uh, organization. They were awesome. We also did something for the ECOE History Center when it was open. We also gave that same PowerPoint, your voice, your power, your vote with the addition of uh, what uh, we worked on for register commit vote to give everyone the information on mail-in voting and, and things of that nature and to get people to register online and to introduce them to uh, vote 411. I also did uh, my own Zoom recording by myself with the help of course my in-house technical support which are my two daughters uh, to give to the Valencia College East Campus uh, for how, to have them put that on their website, their, uh, their uh, history department wanted that as well. And Barbara sent that over to me. So that was really helpful. I also sent them the, uh, the auto version of the OCPS PowerPoint, which they were very happy to get as well. So that actually reached a lot of Valencia students as well as uh, for the local high schools. Um, we did uh, a few other uh, things with um, uh, the Winter Park Housing Authority, which you spoke about earlier with Lee Rambo and Mary Lou Basham, which was great. We did a four week series there where they could pretty much ask us any questions that they had. We gave the PowerPoints, but we also told them about amendments. So uh, overall, it was really a, a diverse group and it was great to work with all other uh, committees that I hadn't really been in touch with before. So this is really a great experience for me. I'm really grateful to have it and to work with such great people. This is great. Thank you. Okay, Victor Colazzo, you, you um, had an opportunity to be a, a guest uh, speaker on several radio programs and um, what we've been doing a lot more of that radio and television as Susan mentioned. Tell us a little bit about what that was like. Yeah, first I just wanted to uh, thank whoever designed our t-shirts for our precinct team. Loved it and it was very <laughs> impressive with all of us uh, wearing the same shirts uh, in the precincts. Uh, great job and thank you. Uh, yeah, I had the opportunity to be on a couple of uh, podcasts. Uh, one, the Soapbox, which uh, really addresses and address um, for urban, uh, primarily a black community. Uh, but I was on the show with uh, members uh, from different organizations at disenfranchisement, uh, the Latino, the Latinx, the LGBTQ, and the star of the show was Bill Cowles. And that one was a Facebook and a YouTube. And, and it was co-hosted by uh, TJ Legacy Cole, who's local and TJ Chapman show, which is out of Atlanta. And we had a lot of good comments and questions uh, from all over the country with that. And then the other one, which uh, was interesting was, uh, it's a podcast called, and uh, the name of the show was Politics and Pickleball. Mm -hmm. and Pickleball uh, podcast. And so the title of that one was uh, Politics and Pickleball. And that was uh, um, really an unusual group uh, of primarily men uh, that are into pickleball from all over the country. And uh, the uh, moderator said it was one of the biggest uh, attended uh, podcast that they had. They again had a lot of good questions, primarily from my impression, uh, they were probably white, uh, uh, older, uh, middle-aged and older uh, uh, men that were on that show. But again, that was a national exposure and we uh, talked about Florida and all those kinds of things. And what was nice for that, and then also I did uh, some comments on the TED show which is a Facebook show. Um, and all three of them 
um, the first uh, comments when I was introduced, the first question was, why is a man representing the uh, League of Women Voters? And in each instance, it gave me the opportunity to tell our story and talk about our mission and talk about our goals. And I could kind of hug the introduction portion a little more when they gave me that lead. And TJ Cole is also a former student of mine from Valencia's West Campus. He was the student government president that I advised there a number of years ago. And you may recognize his name. He is a writer in the um, uh, Orlando Sentinel in the Sunday uh, comments and also is now sitting on the uh, community advisory board for the Orlando Police Department. So we had really good exposure, a lot of good questions and look forward to looking for other interesting groups um, in two years when we try this again. Okay, great, great Victor. <laughs> we, love, we love the titles of the programs you were on. Yeah, so, and I, know, learned, I learned uh, a lot about pickleball. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> so, you know, two things that we um, do that we are extremely proud of every year I mean, in addition to our, all of our voter registration work is adopt a precinct that we participate in. Um, this year for the general election, we adopted four precincts, not just one, but four. And for the primaries, we did three. So let's hear from Leslie Feinberg, um, who was our, our lead off for the um, Winter Park Tech um, for Orange County and, and the one who's consistently done the, through the primaries and the, um, and the general election. So Leslie, you're on. Can you hear me? No, you can. Now we can. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So uh, we, we are the original precinct. Uh, for many, many years, um, the only adopter precinct we had. We had a great team. We were, we had a number of veterans, but for the most part, most the majority were new bees, and uh, everybody came together really well. We all set up the night before, and we were all there at 5.30 in the morning surprisingly, um, and everybody, of course, shirts on, uh, in a great mood, ready to go, and, um, and everything went really well. Of all the things that we were worried about, nothing materialized. Uh, we started, you know, our precinct was about 67% of the registered voters were already, um, had already voted. And uh, we ended up with the, over 80% of registered voters, which is really unheard of uh, voting in this precinct. We were Winter Park Tech, um, precinct number 512. And um, again, 50% increase of registered voters from the primary in, in August. How we did that, I'm sure we had something that we, the league had something to do with that. Um, but yet um, we had, you know, a huge start in the morning, lots and lots of voters and then trickle after that. So we're able to keep on top of it. We had um, two, two poll workers with us most of the day. They were, I was really concerned about lots and lots of questions interrupting and it didn't go that way at all. They were really, really fine. And we even fed them at the end of the day. Um, we had four people walk in without masks. We handled that really, really well. Um, we had planned to put them in the corner, but they were all there at once. We couldn't do that, but we managed. Everybody just jumped in. So we were there from 5.30 in the morning to 8.30 at night. It was a long, long day. You know, everybody backed up everybody when we wanted to have something to eat or or you needed a break. But for the most part, we were there the whole time with masks on, you know, interfacing with the... Um... So what, what kinds of problems did we have? Um, we had to turn away, this always gets me, voters with a wrong precinct. Uh, we, we had a lot of that. We, um, we turned away a number of young people. This was kind of sad that, um, that hadn't voted on time or hadn't registered on time, hadn't met the October 5th deadline and, uh, and didn't know about it. A couple of them came in and uh, thought that, the, the, uh, the, that the, uh, the registration deadline had been extended. 
And there was some bad information about that. And then of course we had a number of expired registrations. But, um, you know, and it's always sad to see that, especially when young people are out there voting for the first time. Um, then um, let me see what else. Uh, Really, that's about it. We balanced at the end of the day. We had a couple of funnies. We had somebody coming in trying to give us a New York uh, a, a ballot to leave us with a ballot from out of state. And then we had one little lady that was really cute. It turns out that she didn't, um, that her voting ballot was sent in and we had to tell her she couldn't vote. It turns out her boyfriend had filled out the wrong one and sent it in. And that probably um, made it so neither one of them would, be, would have been able to vote. But other than that, everybody was friendly. We balanced at the end of the day, everybody went well. And I would say everybody had a pretty good time, although we were exhausted. So um, that's about it. Thank you so much, Leslie. And we're really proud of that work. Um, like you said, that's our original precinct. So, you know, this year we, had so many more precincts that we participated in than we budgeted for. We actually have a revenue line for funds that the Supervisor of Elections gives to our league every year. Mm -hmm. So we took all that extra money that we received from the Supervisor and we converted that into this Get Out the Vote campaign. So the work that you and Jennifer and all the others have done um, to get precincts going really is amazing. And I well, just wanted I, to ask you more person, Jennifer, would you, Tell us about your precinct, maybe a special story real quick. Yeah, sure, good evening, everybody. Um, so ours was um, um, pretty much the, the same. Um, and I'll echo what Leslie said, um, but, but, but first of all, I, I, I sincerely wanna, wanna thank um, all of you, uh, Gloria Sandy, my, my precinct team, they did an amazing job. Everybody who supports the league um, and, and the support um, staff of, or, or uh, volunteers that came around and, and provided us the poll workers with sustenance and important food and drink throughout the day. Um, um, such a su supportive um, administrative staff from OCPS and the supervisor of elections office. Um, um, we, you know, this precinct, um, we're the newbies, you know, um, and, uh, and, and, and it really, it really went off really well. Um, and, you know, it was so lovely to see. There were a lot of first time voters. There were um, um, a lot of families voting, coming to vote together. There, um, you know, there for the, nearly all of the people that came to vote were, were polite and pleasant um, to, to others and to us. And, um, you know, it, 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 it just went off seamlessly. And, and, and I absolutely um, have to shout out to Mary uh, Montana. She did an amazing job um, and her continued support in organizing um, the precincts, the poll workers, keeping everybody in line. She's an amazing um, and peaceful general. So um, mm -hmm. it was it was just, it was such an honor. And um, as Susan B. Anthony would remind us, we must never forget the importance of making our voice heard with someone struggled for your right to vote and use it. And I'm so proud that so many people did. So thank you. Yes, and I, I wish we had time to hear from all all the precincts, but unfortunately we don't. So thank you to all the um, Adoptive Precinct volunteers that participated in that. It's, it's truly amazing. Um, next, I'd like to hear from um, Andrea Ruiz Hayes to talk to us about a, a project that, that got underway in less than two weeks and is going on still now. So um, Andrea, tell us about our election sign recycling program. Hey, sure. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, before I get going, um, I know Kay is here. Kay, Ann Vollmer, uh, Eugene Val Mobley, and I'm sure there's many others on this call tonight that are part of the Natural Resources Committee. Um, I uh, So here's a few updates of what's going on. Yes, it came to light in just a matter of a couple of weeks. Um, we have a very what I thought was going to be a lofty goal of 20,000 signs. Uh, Kay, feel free to un unmute yourself, but I actually think we're going to do it. <laughs> we have hundreds, actually, we've got many of thousands of signs now between the five locations. And um, I know Kay's working with the SEMDEMs and they got a couple thousand signs at one of our locations over on Robinson, which is the first Unitarian Church of Orlando. There's now a couple of 
I would say almost 3000 signs sitting there. And it was evident that someone from um, Cocoa Beach area had brought over hundreds of signs from their area. So granted, we're not uh, wanting people to make that commute, but if they elect to, great. It will all be part of the bundle that goes um, on the 23rd. Here's what's happening. The City of Winter Park, honestly, they're phenomenal. So I don't know if anybody here works for City of Winter Park or you, you, know, you know the partners, but Kay got them involved right of way and they jumped on it. And honestly, they are the benchmark of how we'd like to see a municipality the next time around do that. So we'll definitely have an after action review of call of some way, but getting ahead of it soon enough because we'd love all the other municipalities to follow um, the direction that they took. Um, and, and when I say that's because right away they got on the signage, they paid for their signage and they had the signage posted on the crates that we provided. And then they put signage throughout their normal communication channels and on posters and other, other means of communication. Um, but so some of the exciting things, we have volunteers that have been staffing. And um, after I speak, I'm gonna drop two links in the chat. One is to grab the flyer and the other link I'm going to say what it is. It's to sign up to volunteer to check on a crate. And when I say check on a crate, that means at some point in that day that you sign up for that location, just go and make sure everything's organized. Um, because as you can imagine, those stands can act like clothes hangers and get a, they can get a little <laughs> crazy if we're not maintained. But we're using tape to bundle them um, so that way it's manageable for us on the 23rd to put them on to the truck. Um, if you're not familiar with exactly what we're doing, the stands are going to a local scrap metal facility, which is great. Uh, we won't have to go very far. There are some right even near downtown that we can, downtown Orlando that is, that we can take the scrap metal to. The signs are going to New Cycle Energy, which is located over in Plant City. And here is one of the great things that's happening. Orange County, City of Orlando, and City of Winter Park are all collecting the signs as they normally do through code enforcement. On the 23rd, they too will bring all the signs to the designated roll off that's over by the 33rd street jail that the city of Orlando is providing. So that's when Kay and I and the other volunteers will show up with maybe the 20,000 that we've collected plus those municipalities. And we're gonna fill up a 30 yard roll off. The city of Orlando is paying for that roll off and they are paying for the freight and the dump fee which is probably equivalent to somewhere around three to $400 between labor and fuel and the dump fee of about 40, 48 dollars a ton. Listen, if we get to a ton of that material, that is a big hooray for us because you know each one of them only weighs like an ounce or two, but collectively we'll get up there. We're going to have some data and metrics to be able to share so maybe we can populate that on the league's website too afterward. Um, and we're definitely going to be getting some photos and videos the day that we collect it all and it de gets delivered to New Cycle Energy Plant. Great, thank you so much. And Kate said to me that she, in her research, she thinks this is the only program like this in the country. So we should be extremely proud of that effort. So thank you so much. You know, the two things that I wanted to be sure that we shout out before we um, close here. Um, we, we ended our campaign before the election sign recycling with, with a program on billboards. As we mentioned earlier, we had five billboards and the focus on those billboards and signage also that we did at the, as um, Sandy mentioned at the, at the early voting sites were about vote 411. And I wanna give a big shout out to Terry Gillum who spent along with her team, hundreds and hundreds of hours putting together our local information and our amendments, charter amendments for Orange County on vote 411. It was a monumental task, we do that We've done that every year and it was even more complicated this year in the past. And it was absolutely flawless. Um, I, I've had so many people tell us how important that information is. And I know that people look to the League of Women Voters for local information and they get it clearly from us in Orange County. So the billboards and the signs and the, the putting together the Vote 411 online program.org as well as the printed voter guide, all is because Terry and her team made that happen. So Terry has already stepped off the, the meeting today, so she wasn't able to talk about it, but I, I want to be sure we, we mentioned that. So we, we're very close to closing, and I wanted to give uh, the rest of us an opportunity to add any special stories or anecdotes or observations or reactions that you might have to this year's election. It, it has been absolutely an incredible experience, and I am so thrilled to be a part of this league and 
and be able to shout out all the wonderful work that you've done. We had more than 50, as I said, different kinds of activities. We couldn't talk about every one of them, but if there are other things that people want to say, now's your time. I have one. Great. So, hi, it's Nancy. I just, I, I put it in the chat, but um, I had a, a wonderful team who wrote in excess of 9,000 postcards to returning citizens to get them to register to vote. So I was really proud of them. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Nancy. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, this is Jennifer. This, uh, I, I would also like to offer if there's anything I can do um, with um, any of the recycling or additional efforts. Um, I'm on the Parks and Recs Board of City of Winter Park. I'd be happy to, you know, help in any way if I can. So um, I think this, that's great what you guys have started. That's amazing. Jennifer, maybe Anybody you else? can come over and join us on on November the twenty third when we're when we're <laughs> loading all those signs onto trucks and, and sending them on down the road. There's a reason I was told to keep my mouth shut. I'd be happy to help. <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> Absolutely. Tom, Tom, did you want yeah, to say something? Tom, I, I wondered if anyone had seen any incidents of what looked like voter intimidation or suppression uh, at the precincts. I went around to four of them and did not see anything that looked like funny business outside. So just wondered if anyone had seen anything like that. Did anybody have any of that to report that you saw? No. No? No. My, no. One, of our, one of our board members, um, Marty Rosenthal, was a poll watcher in Sanford and he said that most things were uneventful. They had like one or two people that were a little bit off, but they weren't doing anything that was intimidating voters. And let's all hope that the transition is, is the same. Eugene, you wanna say something? Yeah, two things. One thing, when I was working the Winter Park uh, uh, early voting, I was had the league stuff and I was waving and stuff. And I was kind of standing in between the Biden and the Trump people. And what I observed was kind of disturbing to me. The police came by and they passed the Biden crowd, didn't do anything. But then when they passed the, uh, the, the Trump supporters, they flashed their lights. And I thought that was totally inappropriate as a, as a, a government agency to be doing that. Uh, the other thing is I just want to thank everyone for helping out on the charter amendments. That was a huge effort. Uh, it took a year and a half of my life and it, it, and then it accumulated, it, it ended up without your support, it wouldn't have passed. Um, and I didn't know how we were going to do it after we got it through the board. Uh, so I'm thoroughly 100% happy and looking forward to hopefully the 2024 one and we'll do some more stuff, that, especially Absolutely. on the petitions. Absolutely. Yeah. So our, those charter amendments were very important and we were so proud to be a part of that. You know. I think there's 30 municipalities in this country, and I believe two foreign countries besides the United States, who have some kind of um, legislation or community initiatives around the rights of nature, as you call it, Eugene. And golly day, Orange County is one of them. So that's pretty amazing that we've decided that water has rights as it should, and we need to protect it. So we're gonna take care of it. So thank you. And the, you know, the final note is now that actually the fun starts, the legal fight has started, we've been preempted. And you know, the strategy is, it's really a home rule issue, which I think that hopefully the league will help us out on this because it's just a, the state of Florida keeps on preempting the local communities every time we wanna do something that's, uh, that we think our communities need. So yeah. we're gonna end up probably taking this through the court system. Well, we've started the, we've started the initiative. We've been, I think we've been working on split up for what, about three years now? So about five, um, we talked about this and five years ago. I know I've been writing letters for about three years. So yeah, so and split up is, for those of you who don't know, is the conservation land between Orange and Osceola counties that's been protected in our, US, in our state constitution since 19, I believe 98. So mm -hmm. um, we, golly day, we gave the voters in Orange County a chance to speak again and what, almost 90% of them said yes, or maybe 86% of that group said yes, so important. Any, anybody else want to comment before we close? Uh, Leah, you, you want to say anything? Um, no, just thank you again to everybody. If you do see the vote for one, one signs, if you could bring them to storage, so maybe we can 
use them in the future. Um, it was a concerted effort on everybody. So I think you are all fabulous and defended of democracy. So, so thank you for doing it. Yeah. And anybody else, any comments? We've got about three minutes left before we I think close. Ginger or, has one. A reaction to the election or? Ginger has one. Yeah, Ginger. sorry, I, I don't know. Yeah, thanks. Um, I just wanted to say, um, I put it in the chat, but I'm amazed by what everyone has done here. <laughs> um, just the, the body of work, um, the volunteer sweat hours that went into this is um, so impressive. But I don't know who did these. Um, I spoke with a, I was in a professional conversation this week and mentioned I was in the league and the person had picked up um, a flyer on the amendments at the library. <laughs> and she said it was the most helpful thing that she read on the amendments, <clears throat> how she made her decision and it was from the league. And um, I, I didn't even realize we had those. <laughs> so kudos to whoever did those, they, they made a difference. And, and her comment was, it's unfortunate that they were um, really encouraging people not to come into the library. So I know, um, you know, those handouts kind of went away with COVID, but um, they were well received. So I, I have <laughs> got direct, direct confirmation on that. So excellent. Yes, thank you. Anybody else? We got one minute left. Leah, you want to say something? No? Anybody? Okay, well, thank you all very, very much for the evening. You've given us this hour and a half for us to showcase some of the work that we've been doing. Um, as I said, it's more than 50 activities. It's probably 60,000 different instances of things that this league has done since April. And we need to be very proud of our work. And, and it's amazing how many people stepped up, stepped out and spoke up um, to get out the vote. So, you know, in the, in the past, I think leagues have primarily been focused on voter registration, but we made a difference beyond, way beyond that with a campaign that went from online voter registration all the way up to recycling election signs, <laughs> probably the first in the country. So thank you one and all very, very much. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Leah, most especially for your work, your tireless work. As I say, your imprint was on a, every, almost every single one of these. So thank you Before all. you go, a, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> have a good evening. Sandy, any co closing comments? Yep, just a couple. One is Barbara um, Lanning said, don't forget Hot Topics tomorrow. Um, like mentioned earlier, it's going to be a, a really great session on the media. So if you're able to join us, it's free. So um, come on and join us for that. And then just uh, an overall thank you again for all of the hard work. And one last thought, since all of you are so amazingly active in the league, as you start to think about, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up and, and next, Sarah Rich is somewhere in the, in the squares and they'll be starting to think about our next board, which is in April of 2021, which sounds really far away, but as you all know, time flies. So if anyone has any interest in leadership positions, whether it's at a committee level, there's still some committees that could use some co-chairs or being on the board or any other type of leadership position, we definitely would like to hear from you on that. And again, just appreciate everyone who's on this call, everyone who has participated in making this a very successful get out the vote. And we just look forward to continuing to work alongside you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandy. And thank you to everyone. We're going to close out now. So we'll see you Bye. tomorrow in the middle of the day for Hot Topics. Good night. Good night.